Welcome back family. In today's video, we're going to talk about what indexing is and how does it work. So you may ask inside of the Smith fund, how do you get your returns? How is it credit? Like how does it even work? So keep in mind with today's video, this is not whole life. This is not variable life and this is not fixed life. This is index universal life insurance. Now your cash value earns returns based upon the indexing strategy within their life insurance policy. So let's get it. So with indexing, you will have quite a few options depending on the insurance company we choose. Now they give us a few indexing options or indices as you may call it, but they all have a guarantee of zero. Remember what I talked about in the last video that zero is your hero. Now some of them may have a floor of 1%, but the best ones have the floor of 0%. Meaning you like you can't lose during a bad market. If the market goes down negative 40, 20, whatever, 5%, your floor is 0%. I think the best thing about this is every year it's a new start. So let's put this into perspective. When your money is at risk in the market, when do you even lock up your gains? Now, most people will probably say this is either when you sell or even when you get out. Most of the time, People don't even get out. So you're always in a market, meaning you're always at risk. You can never get out or even lock up your gains for 20 and 30 years. And this is where people are ending up in financial crisis, just like 2008. Now, the cool thing about this instrument or the Smith Fund, Max Funded Tax Advantage Life Insurance Contract is your gains are locked in every year, annually. And those gains locked in every year become the principal, which is very, very powerful. Now, also, like I said before, Zero is your hero, so you're not losing in a bad year. Now, when it comes to the margins on this strategy or this tool, um, people are getting anywhere between zero, like I said, zero is your hero, to 12, even 15%. Now, also, when it comes to margins, it'll play in the S&P 500. These insurance companies indexing in the S&P 500 are capping at about 12%, depending on the insurance company. Now, when it comes to the average, Historically, it's been around 7% average. This means you can go a little bit above seven or even a little bit below seven. Now, when you put it in perspective of your five, 10, 15, 20 year spread, you'll get that average of about 7%. So well, the way this works is with the S&P. So for instance, let's say the S&P goes down about 5% or negative 5%. With the whole market down 5%, you get 0%. Zero is zero your hero, you do not go negative. But wait. There's more. For participating in the S&P, you're also given a participation rate. Let's say S&P gains 10% one year. And all because of the participation rate and the max at 12%, we get every piece of that 10% gain. But for instance, if the S&P were to go up 15, 20%, we would only get that 12% gain because there's a cap. Keep in mind, this would be tax-free under the umbrella of the section codes and the tax code that we talked about in previous videos. So make sure you go back over those videos just to refresh your memory on why we are here. So with that being said, you're able to choose within any year, any given year, and you'll be able to indicate your given returns. If the market goes up 10%, we get 10%. The market goes down 20%, we get zero. If the market goes back up 30%, we get 12% max. And at the same time, every year, annually, our gains are locked in as principal. Now let's talk about a different strategy that companies use called the blended index. Now, you may see 35% of your money in the S&P or Dow Jones, 35% to a bond index, 20% to a Euro stock 50, and 10% to a Russell 2000. Now, with the blended index, because it is a bond component, it typically has higher cap rates but we'll explain this in a little bit. These strategies will cap anywhere between 14 to 16% and it all depends upon the insurance company. Just because these caps are much higher than the S&P's 12%, that don't mean that the S&P's 12% will outperform them. It all depends. Now, when you meet with us and our team, we'll be able to show you the illustrations on this as well. So don't worry. With the blended average returns, it's anywhere between six and 8% just to say safe. Let's just say 7%, which is pretty cool because this blended strategy has a lot of different markets inside of it that you can play with. Also, they have others like the Russell 2000, the Eurostock 50, which has different type of caps 
all depending on what we can afford. One thing I do like to mention is these caps can move, which we like, which we need. We want that. That's cool. Because over time, the interest rates will go all over the place, meaning when the interest rates are low, the caps will be low. But when the interest rates arise or they're high, the caps go up too. So this movable cap plays a big role when it comes to our return and our interest returns and our percentages as well. Now, at this point, you might be asking, how in the world is this even possible? If the market tanks 30%, how does an insurance company, how is this insurance company able to keep my money in there safe, guaranteed? Do they just take the 30% loss and they just give me my money guaranteed at 0%? Like who, who's, who's winning, who's losing? Not to mention if the market goes up 40%, and I only cap at 12, do they keep the rest of the money or what, what's going on here, man? The big answer is no. And this is also one of the main misconceptions when it comes to this concept. Again, this is not a security product and your money is not at risk in the market. That means the insurance company can't take your money and put it in the market. To be honest, your money's not in the market, nor, it's, nor is it in the index as well. So let's do an example here. If you give me the insurance company, $100,000. You put that $100,000 into your policy. Let's say you say that you want to do indexing. Just a side note, you can do what's called a fixed account. Most fixed accounts are earning about 4% right now. So let's say you think that the market is going to crash next year. You say, Hey, insurance company, I don't want to get, I don't want to get my guaranteed zero. Move my money, play my money in the fixed account. So I get that guaranteed 4%. Keep in mind, 4% can move as well. That year may be 4%, the next year may be 3.9 or even 4.5, but don't, don't downplay that 4%. That thing can still grow great interest rates for you. The fix will always be their safety for you, just in case. But if you don't want to play the fixed game, you can always go to indexing and gain that annual historic 7%. Now, let, let's talk about how they do that. With that 100 grand, what they're going to do is, they're going to take 95,000 of that, okay? They're going to put that into a general portfolio. And what that is, they're going to play in double and triple A bonds. So what are they earning on that money these days? Right around anywhere between 4 and 5%. So using the 5%, a year from now, that 95,000 will grow back to 100,000, if not more. This is how we get our guaranteed principal. But that $5,000 left over, that $5,000... That goes to options. Now, what these companies do is called hedging their option. Basically, with that $5,000, this is where they're able to buy that 0% floor or that 12% market cap. Meaning, if the S&P goes up within the next year, the $5,000 that they spent, or in other words, the $5,000 that they take, will go into the S&P options. If the S&P goes up to 10% that year, that means that $5,000 you have in there will go to $10,000. Isn't that cool? You just doubled your money right there. Now, wait a second here. What's 10,000 of 100,000? What percent is 10,000 of 100,000? It's 10%. So the market went up 10%, meaning you got 10% on your $100,000. What if the S&P went up 15%? They would work those options and hedgings and not make 15,000, but they'll make 12,000 because we have that cap, remember? So the way they work it or the way they play it is so they know that we will get paid from it. 12,000, what's that? That's that 12%, meaning that's the cap. Now, what if the market, S&P in particular, went down 40% like in 2008? What happens? The market went down 40%, meaning those options we were playing are completely useless now. At the same time, we still get zero and the insurance company loses that money that they were playing options and hedging with, but that does not mean we lose negative 40% on our $100,000. That $100,000 was in a bond portfolio or a general portfolio account, um, which is averaging that four to 5%, meaning we getting that $100,000 every time. So this is why insurance companies are guaranteeing a zero every time because our principal is not at risk. But there is that 12% cap. But anytime when the market tanks, we gain zero and our $5,000 of options goes worthless, but we still are able to maintain that $100,000 that we put in. Let's jump into year two. Now, let's say after what happened in 2008, our clients and these strategies still gain 0%, meaning they didn't lose anything, nor did they lose their previous returns. 
So this can only mean two things right now. Number one, they still get to hold on to their hundred thousand dollars. And number two, we're gonna do it all over again next year, baby. So the next year, we will split it back up 95, 5% and do it all over again and again and again. Now, if the interest rates go up, that means the cap goes up as well. And also that $5,000 that we're putting into options goes up as well. So that means our cap might go from 12% to 12.5%. This is why you want that fluctuation and that flexibility. Now, if the interest rates go down, our cap goes down, but we're still maintaining that 0% and that general portfolio that we're promised as well. So this is a quick overview of how indexing works. Be sure to speak with one of our financial professionals and we'll sit down with you and illustrate and generate a structure that works for your financial situation. But let me show you one more bonus thing when it comes to indexing. Let's see how this will look on a graph year after year. Now that you understand the basics of how indexing actually works, let's say the S&P goes up 7% and we gain 7%. Consider that gain locked in. Let's say the next year it goes down and that year it goes down 15%. For us, zero is our hero, meaning we don't lose. We don't lose. Now let's say the market goes back up 10%, meaning we go up 10%. So our 7% was locked in when the market crashed because we know that every year our percentages are locked in. Now the market goes up and our gains are locked in and we start at 7% and we don't have to start from the bottom like everyone else does. Playing catch up. We start where we got locked in. So it has been proven that indexing is the way to go for the last 20 years in regards to locking in those gains and not having to go down and go all the way up and fight back up in the market. It's good to lock them in and move when we go up. See you next video. My name is Justin Smith.